This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network. Welcome to the Exxon. The Blues Radio Network, Fiction, Angel Broadcast Network, Twitch Broadcast Network, Use Your Host, Rob McConnell. For more information on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xcbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you still from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our main website where you can listen to the Exxon 724-365, www.exxonradiotv.com. Well, I must tell you, Exxon Nation, that the world of hacking is still alive and vibrant and uh, as you know sony got hacked because of the film called interview now there's quite a controversy going on within the world of cyber security whether or not it was in fact north korea that hacked sony well the fbi says beyond a shadow of a doubt it was north korea and other cyber security experts are saying hate to disagree with you but we don't believe or we have evidence that it wasn't a cyber attack from North Korea. Well, joining me now is the one and only Corey Kay, the man behind com, a good friend of the Exxon and a longtime friend of yours truly, my former producer. And uh, Corey, first of all, to you and yours, the very best of the new year, old friend. And what's going on in the world with Sony? Well, I'll tell you what, um, they, in December 2014, they were the victims of a cyber attack and credentials of Sony employees, passwords Mm -hmm. were compromised, um, people affiliated with Sony pictures, including movie stars, some of their personal details were compromised and, um, it it Mm -hmm. really was a, a big cyber attack and, um, the FBI has officially uh, implicated North Korea uh, in this attack, but the big problem is um, they don't release their information to the public, not mm-hmm. at this time. So how do we know it's North Korea? That's the big question. When we look at when we look at the amount of data that was that was that was compromised, we're talking about terabytes of data. Isn't it strange that nobody at Sony or no one in their iTech department noticed this going on? It is is very strange. You would think especially a company like Sony would be um, savvy enough to monitor Mm -hmm. logs and pick up on something like this, but somehow it uh, went undetected. But isn't it possible, Corey, that these larger companies or or any company of any size who has anything of significance uh, on their servers or in the cloud would have the capability of having an, some sort of alarm that would trigger and send a signal to a, a tech support agent who could immediately monitor and decide whether or not it's a hack in progress? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the technology is there. Um, there are are logging tools built mm-hmm. into all computers and web servers and they're monitoring tools you can set up those alerts and um the i guess the reason they were able to escape detection is instead of going for one big attack where they grab everything all at once they did it little by little over a period of time and it's not clear yet what that period of time was. If they had gone in and um, s- the same IP mm-hmm. address had made several requests in even a short period of time, that would have um, set off an alert and they would have known right away. But if they do just tiny little requests over time, 
that is probably how they were able to escape. And, and also they were able to masquerade as a legitimate user. That's how I think they were able to escape detection. Tell me, Corey, it, with your experience, do you think it's possible that North Korea had the capability and the technology available to to actually hack Sony to the the degree that Sony was hacked? They do. Um, the all of my hacker friends at work um, uh, in the pr- technology press, including Wired magazine, mm-hmm. a lot of people are saying that they just don't have the sophistication to carry out this cyber attack. But um, there are some sources that were quoted in the Guardian um, who were affiliated with the FBI. Right. And what what they said basically is that weak passwords were one of the culprits. So ev- almost every attack that we've seen in the last um, several years, at some point along the chain, a weak password has been involved. All right, Corey, stand by, old friend. You and I have to take our first break. We'll be back in two minutes. Exonation, Corey Key is our special guest, www.xzonetechzone.com. We'll be back in two minutes after this break. Don't go away. Nina Hickok is an expert in exorcisms, psychic warfare, soul healing, angelology, soul retrieval, demonology, energy healing, long-distance healing, astral healing, and much more. Nita is an interfaith minister because she believes all gods and goddesses are valid and that they are part of one divine force that is incomprehensible to us who are incarnated upon this earth. Nita has been doing astral healing, distant healing, spirit release, exorcism, house cleansing and blessings, soul restoring and revival, psychic vampire removal and curse removal, and much more for over 40 years. For more information or to contact Nita Hickok, visit her website at www.astralhealer.com. That's www.astralhealer.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464. Exonation, Corey Key is our guest, www.exonetechzone.com. And uh, Corey, before we went to the break, we were talking about the Sony hack. And uh, you, you'd think once we had the hack of, let me see, Target, we've had the hack of uh, Dairy Queen, we've had the hack of the, uh, the White House, we've had uh, military hacks, we've had the hack by Edward Snowden on, on several places um you'd think that companies would have got the hint that they have to up their security and it seems that companies like sony a multi-billion dollar company would have instituted higher security protocols to prevent such a hack that did as that that happened and you know it just blew me away to find out that they had been victimized by hacking Oh, absolutely. And I think what we need to see, we actually Mm -hmm. need to reimagine how IT work is organized in large enterprises. 
because I think a typical IT department now, they may have a team that looks after web servers and make sure that they're operational, looks um, after the hardware. Yeah. You have teams that um, does maintenance on, on the desktops and workstations. You have all of those teams. But when you consider the major financial losses that these companies are incurring, it seems like it would be well within their interest to add somebody who just monitors these logs mm -hmm. each day. And um, for an attack like this to detect it, I think you have to actually stop um, relying on the automated alerts because they're not working. The sophisticated attackers aren't always bombarding places so the the alerts aren't going to be enough i think you have to monitor the regular activity of even high level executive sure. people because um you know it, it's actually in some instances um higher level executives um it is their information that was hacked their emails accounts that were being used all of that so um, i know that's probably a frightening proposition for them because you have to have someone you can really trust not sure. to leak your your legitimate secrets <laughs> but but even though sony was victimized they were able to take this lemon of a situation and turn it around into lemonade by bringing the interview the movie out in digital format and, and putting it up for up uh, for sale and view on the internet, what do they make? Twenty five million dollars. Oh yeah, and counting. That's right, and they don't have to share this with a theater. That's right, and um, for me personally, mm -hmm. I decided, even though I know how to get such movies for free, um, I have the technical knowledge to do that. I went ahead and paid my $6 to YouTube sure. and stream the movie directly because I wanted to support that endeavor. I want to see more uh, movies available uh, in pre-release form mm -hmm. and, and even exclusive online releases. I want direct channel subscriptions. So um, th this is actually a, a harbinger of good things to come, I think. What did you think of the movie, Corey? It it was funny. Yeah. I was afraid at first that it was actually going to be a serious movie. I hadn't seen any previews, and even though Rogan's a comedic actor, yeah, I thought maybe this could be his crossover role. But it, it was classic Rogan, uh, uh, very funny movie. Not for the kids, though. I, I should put that out there. But uh, funny and poignant. What do you think the, the digital release to the home viewers via computer is going to do to the, to the theater industry? I, I think the, it, this is just my opinion, and I think that this is long overdue because to go out to a movie, to have a good time, you're looking, you're just getting in the doors of the movie, you want 20 bucks, 30 bucks, and then they scalp you, uh, they hold you hostage for popcorn and, and pop and, and everything else. So are, are you going to see the slow demise of the of the movie theaters? I think so. I, I think we're going to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, you'll still have a few specialized uh, theaters. Um, and, you know, some people will still want to go to the movie for nostalgia. But you can save a lot of money doing it at home. And um, I think we're going to see a lot more of that in 2015. You know, it really ticks me off. You go to the movie, you pay your money to get in, and you pay your money for the uh, for all the goodies that you eat there, and then they throw commercials on the screens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's another advantage of yeah. online viewing. In a lot of cases, you do have an option to bypass ads. Like, what the hell? You're, you know, it's just like you go to some stores, they charge you 25 cents for a plastic bag that has the advertising of the company that you just spent money in, and you carry out the advertising for them, and you're paying them to advertise them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we're going to see new business models. Um, people have been over-advertised. Um, they're burnt out on it, and I'm... Um, I don't think advertising is ever going to go away, but you're going to see more and more business models where you can you can bypass that.
You know, I, if you want to advertise, I, 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 more than any, anyone else, understands the importance of advertising. I understand it. However, I get complaints from listeners, viewers, and readers about ads. You know, what are you going to do? All I know is when I get a complaint, I send them a thank you letter because I know that our product is getting out there and so is the advertising. Well, oh, what are you going yeah. to do? You just can't get away from it. If you're, if you're going to a pay or if you're watching something pay-per-view, that's one thing, you know? That's how the product is being paid for. But, Corey, yep. you, know, you know this industry. Our shows go on public terrestrial radio stations and, and on the Internet and, and satellite channels. And we make our revenue from advertising or split revenues or, or, or percentages. That's how we make our money. Yeah. You know, so... It's the problem know. with the theaters that, that you're pointing to mm-hmm. um, with in the case of movie theaters, they're getting paid for you to see the content and they're getting the advertising revenue. It's sort of like a double whammy and online uh, we're seeing more choices. There are completely free networks out there. You don't even have to pay a subscription cost because uh, they're supported by advertising. But um, more and more companies now are giving you like that pay-per-view option where you can just bypass that and pay for the content directly. You know, I, I love it when you as the consumer are given the choice of what you want to watch because you're paying a membership fee. Or a subscription fee. For example, you and I were talking about Netflix before we went on here. I love Netflix. I think it's great. And, and to see what's happening within the cable industry now and, and programming providers, we have Bell Canada here as, as one of our suppliers. And we subscribe to the full package. I think we get over 800 or 900 channels. I, I've lost count. But Bell oh, Canada yeah. to to uh, try and get back some of the viewers they've lost to Netflix, they've come out with Crave TV. Now, Crave TV is a subscription channel that is available either on its own for $4 a month or as part of a package it's included. And on Crave TV, you've got documentaries, you've got movies, you have television, you have music specials. And the list goes on. You want to watch, let's say, Star Trek. They have all the original Star Trek, all the Star Trek second generation, all the Deep Space Nine, all the Voyager. And you can go through each and every show without a commercial. Oh, that sounds like fun. It is. Laura loves it because she can watch Nurse Jackie. And, you know, it's it's really neat when you can actually... Watch one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And I'm watching it and saying, I, didn't, I, I can't remember seeing this. Or, wow, that's what this means. I think that, that the audience gets so much more out of this style of broadcasting. And because they're paying for that service. They are the advertisers. They're picking up the piece of the advertising revenue that the network is losing because they are giving it commercial free. So it's a win-win situation. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's funny. Before the show, Mm -hmm. I was actually looking for a news article that I saw several weeks ago where Sony announced that in 2015 they are going to offer an entire channel that you can subscribe to without having a cable subscription. So um, I don't really believe this, but Mm -hmm. you never know. Maybe the cable companies uh, were behind the attack somehow because they were offended that that Sony would go around them. I don't really believe that, but um, in the absence of concrete information uh, uh, being released to the public, um, you know, anything's possible. <laughs> There's a, I could present the evidence for and against North Korea as the hacker. Sure. Maybe the key companies were there in but, there too. But did, didn't Google come out with a, a network of some sort where they're 
or they're uh, they've got an online subscription service for for videos and so such. Here's what they have. They have the Google Play Store, and what's changing in 2015 is previously you had to have an Android-based device mm -hmm. to really enjoy that. And there are a lot of Android-based devices out there, so it's easy enough, but they're making it even easier because you can now um, join the Google Play Store directly through your Google Chrome web browser you don't have to have an affiliated Android device, and you can start uh, buying that content directly. So I'm pretty excited about wow. that, having that option. Corey, you and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Always great talking to you. Exonation Corey K is our special guest. www.exonetechzone.com. That's www.exonetechzone. Dot com. And w when we come back uh, with Corey, because uh, as I said, Corey has been the producer of the Exxon. And, um, he, he, you know, it was great working with Corey. We used to chat very often, you know, prior to the show and after the shows, five nights a week. Um, Corey, I've, I've done my, my regular January article on what the psychics missed in 2014. So if you'll bear with me, my friend, when we come back from this commercial break, I'm going to read my list and we can both have a couple of good chuckles. This I promise you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The oh yeah man. www.exontechzone.com and Corey and I will be back after this break. Don't go away. What if someone told you you could live to be 120? Would you believe him? What if he told you the Bible guaranteed it? All you needed to do was follow his rules and buy his products. Would you do it? What if you invested 20 years of your life in him? What if he tested his substances on your child? What if your child became brain damaged as a result? Meet Dr. Tyler Belknap, a fast-talking Texas ad man turned health guru. At the helm of a vast health food and supplement empire, he has established himself as the authority on nutrition and longevity. But what his followers don't know is that his products are laced with bizarre psychoactive substances from genetically modified plants developed in his very own secret lab. No wonder his customers can't stop using them. Tyler Belknap will stop at nothing to keep his edge in the market even if it means experimenting on children. Chasing 120, a story of food, faith, fraud, and the pursuit of longevity, a novel from the pen of political cartoonist Monty Wolverton, is an easy and entertaining read full of rich characters and intrigue. It hits home in a world filled with all kind of hucksterism and offers a glimpse of what can happen when GMO technology falls into the wrong hands. Chasing 120 by Monty Wolverton. Get your copy today at www.ptm.org forward slash 120 or on Amazon.com. Manifestation is driven by imagination, intent, and passion. In our culture, all three have been distorted and disabled by modern media and exploitation. Re-engage your imagination and your passion by entering into the world of paranormal romance. Kahir O'Donnell takes her readers on an exciting journey into the endless possibilities of loving, passionate, and mutually respectful male-female relationship. Her latest book, The Long Dark Night, features special ops adventure, a daring rescue, a psychic woman from the stars, and a special agent that will die to protect her. The Long Dark Night by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or amazon.com. How many of you out there have heard of alternative engines? Engines that can run on anything from alcohol to garbage or water. Or carburetors that can get hundreds of miles to the gallon. Or electric or magnetic engines that can practically run forever. You don't know about them because if they were to come into use, they put the oil companies out of business. The concept of the internal combustion engine has been obsolete for over 50 years. 
But because of the oil cartels and corrupt government regulation, we and the rest of the world have been forced to use gasoline for over a hundred years. Big business is primarily responsible for destroying the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. They have no care for the world they destroy, only for the money they make in the process. How many oil spills can we endure? Millions and millions of gallons of oil are now destroying the ocean and the many forms of life it supports. Among these is plankton, which supplies 60 to 90 percent of the Earth's oxygen. It supports the entire marine ecosystem, which forms the basis of our planet's food supply. But the plankton is dying. I thought, well, let's go to some remote state or country, anywhere on Earth. But in doing a little research, I realized that these people broker toxic waste all over the world. They basically control the legislation, and in fact, they control the law. The law says no company can be fined over twenty-five thousand dollars a day. If a company is making ten million dollars a day by dumping lethal toxic waste into the ocean, it's only good business to continue doing this. They influence the media so that they can control our minds. They have made it a crime to speak out for ourselves, and if we do so, we're called conspiracy nuts and we're laughed at. We're angry because we're all being chemically and genetically damaged, and we don't even realize it. Unfortunately, this will affect our children. We go to work each day, and right under our noses, we see our car and the car in front of us spewing noxious, poisonous gases that are all accumulative poisons. These poisons kill us slowly, even when we see no effect. How many of us would have believed if we were told 20 years ago that on a certain day we wouldn't be able to see 50 feet in front of us, that we wouldn't be able to take a deep breath because the air would be a mass of poisonous gas, that we wouldn't be able to drink out of our faucets, that we'd have to buy water out of bottles? The most common and God-given rights have been taken away from us. Unfortunately, the reality of our lives is so grim nobody wants to hear it. Now I've been asked what we can do. I think we need a responsible body of people that can actually represent us rather than big business. This body of people must not allow the introduction of anything into our environment that is not absolutely biodegradable or able to be chemically neutralized upon production. And finally, as long as there's profit to be made from the polluting of our earth, companies and individuals will continue to do what they want. We have to force these companies to operate safely and responsibly, and with all our best interests in mind, so that when they don't, we can take back our resources and our hearts and our minds and do what's right. I wow, yeah, I listened to that, and boy, did he ever did he ever nail it right to the wall. Stephen Scal, the one and only. Kari, what's your take on that? You know, I think this is how the universe balances out. Uh, you can um, make millions of dollars um, putting out violent movies, but um, I think he uses uh, his wealth for good, and um, there are a lot of people like that in the world. It, it balances out. Steven Seagal's a good guy. Yeah, he is. I, lo I love his acting, and You know, he he's a down to earth guy. He really is. I, I you know, I've, I've heard so many wonderful things about him. Uh, unlike several people who are in the news today for allegedly having uh, sex with an underage girl, including Alan Dershowitz and uh, and Prince Andrew, just to name a few. Corey K is our guest. Exxonetechzone dot com. And I would just like to say on the record that I do not believe the claims that are being made by this young lady who has a rather unscrupulous past that Andrew Andrew uh, that Prince Andrew or Alan Dershowitz have any involvement whatsoever I think she's grasping for straws and uh, man I wouldn't want to go up against Alan Dershowitz we've had him on the show and uh, he's a great guy Corey as I was I saying to you in the XO Nation before we went to the commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour I did my regular failed and forgotten psychic predictions for the year 2014. As you may know, we on occasion talk to psychics here a lot less than we used to. And when you hear the following, you'll understand why. 
So, as I said, another year has come and gone, so we have the opportunity to review the world's so-called leading psychics and their predictions for 2014. Now, before we take a, a look or try to make any sense of the predictions, let's review the major events that one could argue should have been predicted, but weren't. Number one, the rise of ISIL. The terrorist organization, not one psychic picked up that one. Not one psychic picked up the Ebola epidemic. Not one psychic picked up the Shabik school kidnapping of 226 girls by Boko Haram in Nigeria. Mm. Not one psychic picked up the Korean ferry of seawall capsizing, killing more than 290 passengers. Not one psychic picked up the Ukraine crisis with Russia. Not one psychic picked up the Malaysian Airline Flight 370 disappearance. Nor did they pick up the Malaysian Flight 17 crashing into Ukraine after being shot down by a missile, killing 298 people. They didn't predict the Israeli launching Operation Protective Edge on the Palestine-Gaza Strip, where 2,100 Palestinians and 71 Israelis were killed. They didn't pick up the United States and its partners launching airstrikes against ISIS or ISIL in Syria. Not one of them predicted the massive drop in the price of oil. No one predicted the uh, Rosetta spacecraft's successful landing on Comet 67P. They didn't predict the FIFA World Cup being won by Germany. They didn't predict the ice bucket challenge. Uh, nobody predicted it. it's 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 virtually in its social impact, and, and yet they didn't predict the death of celebrities like Philip Seymour Hoffman, Maya Angelou, uh, Robin Williams. You know, these these are just some of the big misses that the psychics just never caught on. It, it it's it's amazing to me, Corey, that still with all these disastrous boo-boos, people still go to psychics. It, it just boggles my mind. Oh, yeah. The, the more I think about it, the more I wonder myself. Uh, I think people um, are looking for hope and direction, and they're willing to pay $35 an hour for it, but um, I... I think in some locales, um, detective agencies, uh, police departments, mm -hmm. at, at times, they've even uh, uh, toyed with the idea of, of hiring psychic detectives um, on a limited basis. But I don't think anything ever panned out there. In, in, in 35 bucks, do you know how much Sylvia Brown was charging for a half hour? How much? Try $700. Oh, my. And, and this was a psychic who didn't even predict her own death. She predicted that she would live to be the age of 88, I believe. You wow. know, and her prediction record sucked. It really did. And, you know, once again, I just cannot understand how or why people would rather take their hard-earned money, go to a psychic, and just keep paying and paying and paying when the psychics themselves aren't held accountable for any by anybody for anything. For example, if these psychics were so in tune, wouldn't they pick the winning lottery numbers? Wouldn't they pick the stock that's going to split? Wouldn't they discover all these great mines? Uh, not mines, but mines where vast deposits of gold would be? How come they don't do that? Oh, wait a minute. I know. Why? Because that's not what their gift is for. Their gift is to bilk people out of money. Not all that's... psychics. Not all psychics. Not all psychics. But a great majority. It, it, I, I, it kills me to see psychics revamping their websites with predictions that they never made that have come true. Just boggles oh, my yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, I back before uh, the September 2011 attacks, uh, 
um, a psychic could have gone on air somewhere and say big things were happening in New York, but big uh, New York's a big place and big things happen there all the time, and th that's pretty vague. Not a lot to sink your teeth into there. Yeah, but they don't want to go, go online and, and say those kind of things. Come on. They do that. <laughs> they do that, and they'd be held accountable. So what we're doing now is we, in every January edition of the X Chronicles newspaper, we are put going through the, the vast resources of the Internet, finding out what the predictions are by some of the more prominent or better-known psychics and publishing them. So that come January of the next year, everybody can look back and see what the psychic said. I think this is a great way. They need to be held accountable. There you go. And speaking of bogus things, uh, if there's one word I want the listeners to take away tonight, it's the word bogons. Um, one of the reasons we, we can't track um, with certainty where these attacks are coming from mm -hmm. is because t almost 21% of all IP addresses that are out there are called bogons, bogons. or bogus IP addresses. So how do you get a bogus IP address? You um, can apply directly to the ICANN, which is the international body that um, basically doles out um, uh, web domains. You have to have one central authority, really, that manages that, or at least a very small number. It's a lot easier to, to just have one entity dole all of it out but um, if you have $2,500 to spare so um, you can um, you can actually buy your own bogus IP address you don't even have to apply for one directly through the, the ICANN mm -hmm. um, you can really use any IP address including your one at home and use software that will spoof IP addresses hmm. there it's software that can spoof it every 30 seconds two minutes whatever interval you set and um, you just go out there and you use a fake address so I, I saw an article saying that the North Korean attackers were using Taiwanese servers um, to to carry out the Sony hack but um, unless the the FBI has a special tool which they actually probably do mm -hmm. Uh, for um, seeing through all of that encryption and finding that true source IP address. Um, uh, it, it's hard to say whether the servers were in Taiwan, North Korea, the U.S. It, it's really hard to tell with all the bogus IP addresses or bogons out there. All right, Corey, uh, what, kind of, what kind of things should the listeners look for when it comes to high-tech uh, innovations and high-tech releases for the year 2015? This is a good question, and the answer is going to surprise many. This is uh, every year in Las Vegas, they have the Consumer Electronics Show, mm -hmm. and one of the things that's being talked about this year is that there aren't a lot of new inventions that really? are being released this year. Um, there are better 3D printers. Mm -hmm. There are better televisions. There are better virtual reality headsets. But 2015 so far does not look like it's going to be a year where we're going to see some big new invention that we haven't heard of before um, it looks like we're going to just see better versions of the same and i think for items like 3d printers in 2015 we're going to see a price drop and um you know companies will make better mm -hmm. features they'll they'll allow you to use a wider variety of materials so you can make a, a wider variety of things with 3d printers and you're going to see um ultra hd televisions that can maybe transition faster so you don't notice the pixel movement but um no breakthrough inventions so far no, eh? and i don't have to be a psychic to predict that what about this 4 hd um screen that that's out there is it really 4 hd or is it just a super high resolution 
it is a very high resolution and the early feedback mm -hmm. I received has been mixed. One person went down to a store where they had a, a demo and they basically echoed what I, I've seen online and that uh, if you're up close you can really tell the difference between these 4K Ultra HD televisions and a regular HD television. But if you're far away, the human eye can't even detect the difference. Now, you and I talked a lot last year about the uh, new, uh, well, what was it, the new Windows that was coming out? Windows 10? Yeah. How's yeah. it doing? Have you found any more... Um negatives or positives that you'd like to share with the nation? I like what I see so far. Um, the negatives, interestingly enough, are the features that they, it seems like they want to carry over from Windows 8. Mm -hmm. So Windows 8 I, is just so thoroughly bad in so many ways that I don't even like these carryover features. In the past uh, versions of Windows, you could easily click a few times and get to the control panel uh, or type a key phrase and get to the control panel. Mm -hmm. In Windows 8 and 10, they have a, an equivalent called PC settings, and it, it's an app, and it takes too long to load. You click wow. on it, and then you wait. So I don't like that at all. But Windows 10 is a vast improvement from Windows 8, and it can't come soon enough. All right, Corey, stand by. We've got to take our final break, www.exontechzone.com, and we'll be back. Don't go away. Hi, this is Rob McConnell, just letting you know that the X Chronicles newspaper is now available online at www.xzonebookclub.com. All past editions and current editions of the X Chronicles newspaper are available for 99 cents. That's www.xzonebookclub.com, and that's 99 cents U.S. per edition. And don't forget, the X Zone store is now open as well for all of your X Zone Nation merchandise www.thexzonestore.com With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance, why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzone.com. 
xzbn.net. Corey Kay is the name. His website is www.exontexone.com. All right, Corey, what do you believe or what stories in the news in 2014 really got your interest? Well, there were a few duds. There, there was the big new iPhone 6 that mm-hmm. seemed so great and it um, it, it became a scandal because it was so easy to break. And uh, I haven't heard good reviews, even from loyal uh, iPhone and iPad users. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the positive side, we have the the beta release of Windows 10, which I think is a step in the right direction. We have direct subscriptions available through mm-hmm. Roku, Chromecast, um, Chrome box um, amazon all sorts of venues um, we had a lot of cyber attacks 2014 was absolutely the year of the cyber attack and um, we kept hearing about it even amidst all of the um, controversy surrounding police shootings in the the united states and, and that's police um, shootings during arrests and people shooting the police, which um, that's been the big, big, not just yeah. domestic, but an international issue. And yeah, we had um, the the f- demise of 8.1. I know their market share went up slightly this year, but it's a bad idea. Um, I'm not getting good feedback from the customers um, and nobody, everybody can't wait for Windows 10 to be released. We're, we're ready to move on. What's the story behind Apple? Is Apple failing? Apple is not keeping up. Um, as good a job as uh, Steve Jobs did in mm-hmm. bringing the company back and making it a household name and as valuable a uh, property as Apple is, um, they they never even got to 10% of the market. You would think with all the commercials that we see um, that Apple would be about half of the computers out there. But um, at least in the home market, mm-hmm. they're, they're really only about 10% of the computers out there. People don't want to shift away from Windows. Yeah, because, you know, I, Apple and, and Windows was like the... Uh... Betamax and and the VHS were going back into the what seventies or late uh, early eighties, and it, you know VHS finally went over, and it seems that even though Apple was starting to really get ahead, that Windows has certainly caught up. Yeah, absolutely. They they never knocked Windows out the out of the box, but they do have the Apple TV, um, the iPhone. Despite the the whatever flaws in the new one, it's still a good device. Um, they test their apps well. It, it's less likely that you're going going to have malware right. uh, loaded onto your phone. Um, so I like that. So Apple has a place. They bought Dr. Dre's The Beats, which was big. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess the big side story underneath that is um, you had a kid who grew up in Compton, California, one of uh, the most notorious ghettos in the, the U.S., and he is a billionaire like Oprah now. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Corey, as always, when I have the pleasure of talking to you, old friend, time goes by so fast. Please, my very best to your missus, to to your son, to the cat, George, and all those in your family. My very best for the new year. And uh, you and I have got a lot happening in the new year and a lot of great things going to be happening to the show, thanks to you and your hard work. So looking forward to keep working with you, my friend. Oh, yeah. Happy 2015. All right, buddy. Take care of yourself. Exonation, my good friend, the one and only Corey K, www.exontexone.com. By the way, I just learned out that Victor Rives, uh, the gentleman behind uh, Talk Star Radio Network, had passed away. So to his family, 
Our condolences. We'll be back. Don't go away. 